Hi everyone, I'm Mark and this is the Motorola Droid for Verizon. This is my first video for my new site called CravingMobile.com. I suggest you head over to that site for a full review coming up soon. Let's compare it with some other touchscreen devices. So here we'll have the droid next to the iPhone. It's uh, basically about the same size. Here's the droid next to the Nokia N900. Let's take a look at the droid's hardware. Here we have a 3.7 inch capacitive touchscreen. On the side, we have the volume control and the camera button. We have a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus and dual LED flash. On the back, you see the speakers. You slide this open for the battery. This phone has a 1400 milliamp battery. It also comes with a 16 gig micro SD card. On this side we have a micro USB port for charging and syncing with a computer. On top there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a screen lock or power button. At the bottom of the screen there's four interface buttons. These are not hardware buttons so you can't feel anything when you press down on it. But when the phone is on there's some feedback when the display vibrates. When you open the phone you see the QWERTY keyboard. It looks very flat, but if you run your finger on top of them, you actually feel the separation. There's like a hump underneath these flat uh, buttons that make you feel the separation. And when you click down, you feel the feedback. And on the right of the keyboard is the directional key, which has a center select. Alright, so let's turn this thing on. So when I first got this phone a few hours ago, it asked me for my Google account and it automatically got my contacts from Gmail. So that's very convenient. I didn't have to sync it with another, with another device. So this is the home screen on the Motorola Droid. There's three panels, left, center, and right. I just got this a few hours ago, so I haven't really customized it yet. Here we have the application button which is scrollable. It will have all the applications you installed or pre-installed. So on top of the screen is a uh, Google search. You could activate it with the on-screen QWERTY. Let's uh, try something here. Flag. It automatically tries to complete your search. But you could also use the hardware QWERTY on this device. Customizing the screen is possible by just long pressing and you have the option to add shortcuts, widgets, folders, and even change your wallpaper. On top there's a toolbar that you could drag down. Here you'll see notifications for new emails or messages from your applications. So if you want more applications, you go to the Android market. I heard there's about 10,000 applications currently available. Some are free and some are paid for and you pay with a Google account which connects to your checking account or credit card. So this is what I found about the four buttons on this phone. Here's the back key where you could go back to the previous screen from anywhere. Here's the application menu. This is like your, your settings menu for from wherever you are. Like if you're in an application, you click on that for options. And this one just goes back to the home screen. And this is the search button for quick access to Google. You could even long press to activate the Google search by voice. Navigate to Empire State Building. So email on the droid is, is really good. You um, click for one for uh, as an example. There's HTML. 
Now you click on this to show images. And then to go back to inbox, just press the back button. And um, this is push. You get notified whenever a new email comes in. It'll show up in the notifications bar. To compose a new email, just click the application menu and then click compose. Let's take a look at the web browser. Remember the application menu? Let's go to bookmarks, go to tech meme, and see how that loads up. You double click the zoom, there's kinetic scrolling, also go in landscape view. You could also use these to zoom in and out. Let's take a look at the camera. You activate it by holding down the camera button. Then you press halfway to autofocus. Now what I notice about this camera is that it's really bad at autofocus. See, that's my third attempt. Until it goes green and take a picture. It also takes a while to show the preview. I really like this phone so far. The display is very sharp. It's bright. It's snappy. Very responsive. I like the keyboard. It's flat, but like I said, you feel the separation and it's very usable. So that's my first impressions. I'll have a full review up on cravingmobile.com. Thanks for watching.